Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakaupa Tarubhyas Chya Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha We welcome everyone to our study of the Nectar of Instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. So this morning we have to wind up the course. This is the final lesson of course. So we're going to oh, we'll have a PowerPoint on the final section, which we have to show you. So I'll, I'll just switch to screen sharing. Is everyone able to see this the slide? Yes, I think so. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes, Maharaj. All right. Yes, so you can see the title, the highest stage in conclusion, covering text nine to eleven. Remember, text nine spoke about the hierarchy among holy places. Would someone like to remind us what, how the hierarchy runs in relation to the holy places in Vrindavan? Uh, yes, Harish Vidma Maharaj, go on. So, superior to Vaikuntha is the Mathura where Lord had taken birth. And superior to Mathura is uh, Vrindavan where uh, the Lord used to go to attend the coke house and perform various pastimes, uh, Ras Leela and all. And superior to uh, Vrindavan is Govardhana Hill because Lord had himself had uh, held, held Govardhana Hill and he did many pastimes in Govardhana Hill. And superior to Govardhana Hill is Radha Randa, which is non different from Radha Rani. Thank you very much. Very nice. Could you tell us why Radhakund is so important? You said none different from Radharani, and what's the signif What's the importance of Radharani? Radharani is the greatest. Uh, she is the present potency of Lord Shri Krishna, and she is the serves the uh, serves Krishna in the greatest, uh, which which pleases Krishna. So. Uh, the Kund, Radha Kund is also is equally uh, dear to Sri Krishna as Radha herself. Oh, okay, very nice. Thank you so much. All right, that was text number nine, and then text number ten described a hierarchy among uh, different people and coming to devotees and among the devotees, who is the highest? Would someone like to take us through the? Main point of text number 10. Okay, Acharya Nanda Prabhu. And Hare Krishna. Well, first, uh, the, uh, among the karmis, those who uh, have knowledge or jnani, they are better. But among the Gyanis, those who are liberated or becoming, uh, doing devotional service, they are better, or the Bhaur Bhakta, better than Gyanis. And among the Bhakta, among those who perform devotional service, the Gopi are the 
tugas dan uh, among the goldies di Sima Ciradarani is the rockmosh yes very good and Prabhupada also explains among the karmis there are different types of karmis some karmis are pious and some are not can you explain Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, among the karmis, there are two types of karmis, karmi and uh, vikarmi. Karmi is following the rule regulation described in the Vedas, uh, doing the uh, primitive activities like ejakya, sacrifice, and work according to the rule and regulation. But the uh, vikarmi is the neglected uh, 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 rule and regulation described in the Vedas. So what's their destination of the two karmis? Where are they going? So uh, karmi will going to the higher planetary system, uh, enjoying the creative work, and we karmi going to the lower planetary system. Yes, all lower species of life, right? All lower species, yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, so... We'll just let me just go into the slideshow here now. We won't spend time with this. These are quotes from the the Hari Nam Chintamani, but I don't think they're relevant at this point. Uh, here's a nice verse. Someone can read the verse. Where did you go in the purple? Therefore, material senses cannot appreciate Krishna's holy name, form, qualities, and pastimes. When a conditioned soul is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the Lord's holy name and taste the eminence of the Lord's food, the tongue is purified and one gradually comes to understand who Krishna really is. Bhakti Rasamrita 1.2.234. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you, Very nice. And another statement here. Go ahead, Prabhu. Premanjana Chudita Bhakti Viloka Vina Santas Viva Hudayesh Viloka Yente. The pure devotees see Krishna in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the song of Palve of Love. Yes. Brahma Samhita 5.38. All right. So, we want to see Krishna with the heart. And from the purport, When Krishna manifested himself in Vraja, both the devotees and non-devotees saw him very high, but only the devotees watched him eternally present in Vraja as the priceless jewel of their heart. Nowadays, also, the devotees see him in Vraja in their hearts. Saturated with devotion, all can see him with their eyes. The eye of devotion is nothing but the eye of the pure, unalloyed spiritual self of the chief. The form of Krishna is visible to that eye in proportion to its purification by the practice of devotion. When the devotion of the neophyte reaches the stage of Kava Bhakti, your eye of the devotee is tinged with the alway of love by the grace of Krishna, which enables him to see Krishna face to face. Dhamma Samhita 3.38 Alright, so Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati's purport here to the Premanjana Charita verse describes how we actually see Krishna with the eye of devotion. 
right? With the eye of devotion. And he says the eye of devotion is actually the, it's the eye of the self. The spiritual self actually sees Krishna. So we want to develop that kind of vision. All right? So coming on to the location of the hierarchy of spiritual places, just some references here from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Someone can read? Can we have a volunteer? Um, Indra Lekha Kripa Mataji. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sri Rupa Goswami Tad Uppari Goloka Vrindavana that Goloka Vrindavana is the topmost region of spiritual sky. Go ahead. Uh, how is that one location is higher than the other? Yes, go ahead. Mataji? On what basis is this distinction made? Go ahead. The, ex the exchange of spiritual happiness between Krishna and his devotee, in which Krishna is controlled by his devotee, is compared to an ocean of nectar, into which the devotee and Krishna plunge. This is the verdict of learned scholars who appreciate Krishna's opulence. Madhya 19.29. Okay, let's go back to this. How is it one location is higher than another? And what basis is this distinction made? Is it clear? Would anyone like to answer this question for us? Any volunteers? Okay, Sachinandana Vishwambar Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, uh, I guess that distinction is according to the rasa which Krishna enjoyed, uh, or the devotees uh, enjoyed with Krishna, with various division of rasa. So, the distinction is according to that. Yes. Uh, the further it goes, the uh, higher it goes. Yes. And, uh, uh, Exactly right. The, the, there's greater and greater ras. The, for example, the ras in Vaikuntha. What is the rasa generally in Vaikuntha? That is. So the, the rasa is more dashya ras, right? And then when we go to Goloka, then it's more. You get more the Madhurya Das. All right, that, yeah, that's the main distinction. There's the, the, the rasa becomes richer and more deeper in the different places. On that basis, there's distinction. And here, it's explained how the devotee gets more and more nectar seeing Krishna, Krishna being placed under the control of his devotees. This is, this is one of the opulences of Krishna, that Krishna, can, that Krishna is willing to be controlled by his devotees. We may think this is a fault, but it's an opulence that Krishna takes the greatest pleasure enjoying the loving care of his devotee, like Mother Yashoda. Someone read? Raktim Prabhu, would you like to read? Yes. Uh, on the platform of conjugal love, attachment for Krishna, rendering service of his him to the relaxed feeling of Eternity and the feelings of maintenance all increase in intimacy. On the platform of conjugal love, 
the devotees offers his body in the service of the Lord, plus on this platform of transcendental qualities of all five rasas are present. All right. So in this in this uh, section from the Chaitanya Charitamrita is described the different rasas. You see that the relaxed feeling of fraternity, of first of all, rendering service unto him, that's dasyaras. Then the relaxed feeling of fraternity, that's sakyaras. The feelings of maintenance, vatsauyaras. Uh, and the platform of conjugal love, madhuryaras. So all five rasas are present when one is actually on the platform of conjugal love. That is the point, that although that they're experiencing conjugal love, they're at the same time they're serving and there's friendship, there's maintenance, it's all expanding, increasing. Right? Tom, you can go ahead Prabhu, read. During the Rasa dance, Krishna did not exchange loving affairs with Radharani due to the presence of the other gopis. Because of the dependence of the others, the intensity of love between Radharani and Krishna was not manifest. Therefore, he stole her away. Because there were so many gopis present, so Krishna couldn't show the kind of affection which Radharani was maybe used to or what, what she wanted. So Krishna, of course you can see in the Rasa dance, Krishna is dancing with all the gopis and as well as Radharani, but that doesn't please Radharani. So therefore Krishna stole her away so that he could show his special affection for her. Go ahead. If Lord Krishna rejected the company of other gopis for Srimati Radharani, we can understand that Lord Sri Krishna has intense affection for her. Right. Krishna, she gives the greatest pleasure to Radharani. And so, it's shown by this pastime. Go ahead. Hmm. This pastime took place in Vrindavan at Vamsivat, and all categories of the gopis of Raja participated. So there was limited intimacy. Krishna's stealing of Srimati Radharani away established her preeminent position. Preeminent pre position, right. Uh, different categories of gopis. Some gopis, they're coming from the Naimisha, from the uh, Dandakaranya forest. They had seen Lord Ramachandra in the Treta Yuga and they desired to have conjugal relationship with Lord Ramachandra. So they got the blessing that they could come as gopis and take part in Krishna's pastimes to enjoy conjugal ras. Lord Ramachandra wouldn't allow it. He said, you come in the next incarnation. So the sages from the Dandakaranya forest, they, they're among the gopis, as gopis. And then there are other gopis who are the personified Vedas, because the personified Vedas also wanted to understand more Krishna's pastimes and Krishna's mood of conjugal love. So the personified Vedas, they took birth in the families of gopis and they became gopis. And they're also there in the Rasa Lila. And then you've got other gopis, some of them are Nichasiddha, came from the spiritual world to take part, and some are new gopis, they're coming up. So all different categories of gopis are there. So Krishna stealing Radharani, establishes her preeminent position 
because <laughs> if he's in the presence of all these other gopis, Radharani is not so, so comfortable, she's not so satisfied. Yes? Go ahead. Finding herself treated equally with all the other gopis, Radharani displayed her tricky behavior and left the circle of Rasadams. Missing Radharani's presence, Krishna became very unhappy and began to lament and wander throughout the forest to search her out. So sometimes Krishna disappears and the gopis are looking for him and other times Radharani disappears and Krishna has to go and look for her. So this is the tricky dealings of Radharani. Yes? This pastime took place in the spring at Govardhan, which only the most exalted gopis participated. So there was more intimacy and consequently a higher rasa. Radharani's leaving, Krishna trying to find her and lamenting when he couldn't find her, demonstrates how Krishna comes under the control of Radharani's love, which also means a higher rasa than in Vrindavan. So, we see different places of different intensities of rasa. Giriraj Maharaj is telling us that the rasa at Govardhan was greater than the rasa at Vrindavan, although in both places it was rasa lila. The rasa lila was performed in different places, but the rasa was different, diff not just due to the place, but because of what happened, because of the activity. Mm. Yes. Among the loving affairs of the gopis, Ramananda Rai continued, Srimati Radharani's love for Sri Krishna is topmost. Indeed, the glories of Srimati Radharani are highly esteemed in all revealed scriptures. Just as Srimati Radharani is most dear to Sri Krishna, her bathing place, Radha Kunda, is also dear to him. Among all the gopis, Srimati Radharani is supermost and very dear to Lord Krishna. Yeah, because she, her love for Krishna is topmost. She has the greatest love. It means she's willing to sacrifice everything for Krishna. Only Radharani's closest gopi friends could participate in the pastimes at Radha Kunda. So there was even more int intimacy here than in Govardhan and thus a higher rasa. Hmm. Alright, so now here we, you can see uh, we put it in a table just to make it easier for you to visual understand here. So on the bottom at the bottom of the table we have Shantaras, Santaras, it's a stage of neutrality. And that's in Vaikuntha, you can find this Ras, and it's mentioned that the, the nature of Vaikuntha, there will be detachment from material desires and attachment to Krishna. Naturally, you gotta go, you go, if you're going into Vaikuntha, you can't have material desires. You have to be strongly attached to Krishna. So, but you may be in Santaras. Santaras is a stage of neutrality. It means you appreciate the opulence, you're attracted by Krishna, but you're not actually doing anything. You haven't taken up any service yet. So that is Santaras. And examples of Santaras are there in things like the cows and the flowers and things. So it, we have also the uh, the nine yogendras are in Shantaras. Four kumaras are also in Shantaras. Hmm? 
And then going on, you come to one stage up, Dasharas. Dashara. Remember who, who are the examples in Vrindavan? Who are Krishna's servants? Dasharas. Do you remember? Just, just about now. Yes, come on, Prabhu, go ahead. Right. There's Krishna's servants in Vrindavan. Do you know any Krishna's servants in Vaikuntha? No, Maharaj. Well, we had, anyway, we had one of Krishna's servants who was in Dwarka there, Daruka, Krishna's chariot driver, Daruka. All right, so you see the quality there for Dasyaras, that in addition to detachment from material desires and attachment to Krishna, one is also engaged in service. He has that mood of giving service. So that's also, that's a predominant mood in Vaikuntha. And we go on to describe another kind of quality which is there in Vaikuntha. It's described as Gorava Sakyaras. Gorava Sakyaras is friendship, but where we don't consider ourselves to be on the same level as the Lord. The Lord of Vaikuntha, we could say Lord Narayan, one would not be an intimate, one may be friendly, but it's not going to be like the friendship which is there in Vrindavan. Just like Uddhava, Uddhava's relationship with Krishna is Gaurava Sakyaras. Uddhava would never sit on the same level as Krishna. And he would, ex he would like to wear Krishna's old clothing, and he would wear Krishna's flower garlands, and he would eat Krishna's remnants. He was very much in the mood like that. He gave a lot of respect to Lord Krishna. So that is called Gaurava Sakyaras, and that's also there in Vaikuntha. But when you go into Vrindavan, there's also Sakyaras, it's called Vishramba Sakyaras, and there's a mood of equality there. Just like the cowherd boys, the gopas, they're friends with Krishna, and they're you know, they can defeat him, they can climb on his back, and they can play around so many different ways. They're just, they, you know, they, they're like equals. So there's one additional quality which is there with that Vishramba Sakiras, and that is the confidence of fraternity. That, you know, they feel very intimately connected, they're close friends. So that's the mood of Vishramba Sakyara. And then going on, Vatsalyaras, which is also in Vrindavan, parent, uh, being the parent of Krishna and protecting him. Can you think who, who is doing, who is in Vatsalyaras? Someone? Vatsalyaras in Vrindavan would be? Um, let's go to Taina Radha Vrindavan. Nanda Maharaj? Yes. Anybody else? Nanda Maharaj. Only oh, none. One at a time, one at a time. Um, is Sri Chandrika Mataji, go ahead. Uh, Devki and uh, Vasudeva. Vasudeva. Well, are they in Vrindavan? Oh, uh, no. Where are they? Mathura. Sorry? Yes, they're in Mathura, right. Vasudev and Devaki, they're in Mathura. So they're more, their mood is more Vaikuntha. Yeah. Okay. 
Mathura. What about Putana? Can you just repeat that, Maharaj? Your voice broke there a minute. I'm asking, what about Putana? Putana. Yes, what about Putana? Yeah. Where does she go? Yes, actually she does. She goes to Golok. Not to be like Mother Yashoda, but you know, she's, she, is, she does get into Golok because she's got that mood of being the, the mother, nurse, she's the nurse for Krishna. So she got that position. All right, let's, and then uh, we go on to Madhurya Ras, and you can see in Madhurya Ras, we've discussed that it's found in three different places. It's found in Vrindavan, it's found in Govardhan, and it's also at Radha Kund. And it increases from Vrindavan to Govardhan to Radha Kund. Although it's all Madhurya Ras, but there's greater and greater ecstasy, greater and greater intensity of Ras as we come from Vrindavan to Govardhan to Radha Kund. And the nature of Madhurya Ras is that all the qualities are there. Detachment from the material and attachment to Krishna, service, the confidence of being Krishna's friend, the mood of maintaining and looking after Krishna, and then Madhurya Ras even offering one's body for the service of Krishna. So this is how we distinguish on the basis of Ras, one place from another. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you can see. Can you read it all right? The different arrows say, increasing uh, increasing intimacy and love and increasing pleasure of Krishna and then increasing pleasure of devotee. As we come from Shantaras to Madhurya Ras, it's like that. The pleasure of Krishna, the pleasure of the devotee and the intimacy of love is all increasing. Therefore there's a hierarchy, a difference between one place and another. Now, the gopis, the most exalted devotees. Would someone like to read, please? Maybe go to Soumya Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, gopis, most exalted devotees. Lord Krishna has made a firm promise for all time. If one renders service unto him, Krishna correspondingly gives him an equal amount of success in devotional service to the Lord. Go on. Hey, yatta maam prapadhyante tamusta taiva yajamikam mama vartta manana vartante manushya partha sarvasana According to Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 4.11 As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pita. Keep reading. Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 32nd chapter, 22nd verse, it is said that Lord Krishna cannot proportionally reciprocate devotional service in the Madhurya Rasa. Therefore, he always reminds a debtor to such devotees. Madhya 8.92. Can you explain this? Why is Lord Krishna a debtor? Um, because in Madhurya Rasa, like, uh, it is not equality to everyone. I don't understand. Like Krishna uh, cannot give equal love to everyone, so maybe he demands a debtor. He cannot give equal love to everyone. 
Is he supposed to give equal love to everyone? You just read the verse, right? As you surrender, I will reward you accordingly. So, how much has, has he got to give to people in Madhurya Ras? Like, according to their devotion, Maharaj, if their devotion is more higher, then he, he will re reward according to that. Yeah, he has to give more. The, the greater the devotion they show to him, the more he has to give to them. Right? So, Madhurya Ras is the, the topmost Ras. They've given everything for Krishna. So, what? So, it's difficult for Krishna to repay because they've given so much to Krishna. They, gave, they sacrificed everything, even their own bodies for Krishna. They sacrificed their reputation as chaste women. They sacrificed their relationship with their family. They sacrificed their chastity. They gave up everything just simply to please Krishna. So Krishna is indebted to them that they gave so much to him, how can he repay them? It's very difficult because they gave so much. Go ahead, read. Uh, I'm not able to repay my debt for your spotless service, even within a lifetime of Brahma. Your connection with me is beyond reproach. You have worshipped me, cutting off all domestic ties, which are difficult to break. Therefore, please let your own glorious deeds be your compensation. Madhya 8.93, Shrimad Bhagavatam 10.32.23. All right, so Lord Krishna said, Naparayaham, I cannot repay you. Why? Because you, you've given so much for me. So Lord Krishna asked the gopis, let your own glorious deeds be your compensation. Just like when we go for Sankirtan and to distribute Krishna consciousness, we take a lot of trouble, we experience a lot of inconvenience, sometimes people are really nasty and, and it can be very difficult, very challenging. I was just speaking this morning to devotees in Russia and they're beginning the Christmas marathon and of course it's very cold in the winter time, the winds and the snow and the ice, but you know, they go out there and they try their best to distribute Krishna consciousness. So they're taking so much trouble and people can be very nasty also, people not always very pleasant, you know, not everybody's nice. So we have to be satisfied that what we're doing is pleasing to Krishna. We have to be satisfied that what, because we're making this attempt to try to please Krishna. We don't get paid for it, we don't get anything, we don't expect anything. We're just satisfied to be able to try to give some service to Krishna. So Krishna tells the gopis like that, be satisfied by your own deeds. In the same way we also have to be satisfied with our devotional service. That we've tried our best, we, 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 we've we're trying, we're trying, and we have to be satisfied that what we did was worthwhile, that we appreciate it. We're thankful we got the opportunity to do service for Krishna. All right, go ahead, Manaji, keep reading. Uh, although Krishna's unparalleled beauty is the topmost sweetness of love of Godhead, his sweetness increases unlimitedly when he is in the company of the gopis. Consequently, Krishna's exchange of love with the gopis is the topmost perfection of love of Godhead, purport. Krishna and his devotees become perfectly intimate in conjugal love of Godhead. In other mellows, 
the Lord and the devotees do not enjoy transcendental bliss as perfectly. Madhya 8.19 So, we see that, that you could say there is also rasa there in Vaikuntha, but it's not the same bliss. The rasa in, in Vaikuntha is, is just not anywhere equal to the rasa which is there in Vrindavan. It's described here that the sweetness which is there in the dealings between Krishna and the gopis, that is so pleasing, so relishable. It's a, this is a perfection. You don't find that kind of thing in Vaikuntha. Although the, the Lord is there in Vaikuntha, it's the same Krishna, he's the Lord of Vaikuntha, but it's a different rasa. The mood is different. The Lord is, you know, he's the Lord of Vaikuntha and he's on a throne and the devotees have to deal very respectfully with him. It's very different. There's not the intimacy which is there in Vrindavan. All right, now hearing about Srimati Radharani being most, most dear to Krishna. Who would like to chant the Sanskrit verse? Um, maybe go to Sachinandan Vishwambar Prabhu, your hands raised. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll make a few. Bhagwan Hare Ishwaraha Yano Vip. I'm sorry, Prabhu, your voice broke. <laughs> anyway, read the English, Prabhu. Okay, I think. Can we go to Govinda Prabhu Alright, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu then, carry on. Radha, most dear to Krishna, when the gopis began to talk among themselves, they said, Dear friends, the gopi who has been taken away by Krishna to a secluded place must have worshipped the Lord more than anyone else. Machalila 8.100, Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto, 30th chapter, 28th verse. All right, so the gopis themselves understood how Srimati Radharani must have given more pleasure to Krishna than they did. They said the, the, the gopi who was taken away by Krishna must have worshipped the Lord more than anyone else. So more than they worshipped this Srimati Radharani, she must have worshipped the Lord the best. Go ahead Prabhu, keep reading. <clears throat> Among the gopis of Vrindavana, Srimati Radharani and another gopi are considered three. But when we compare the gopi, it appears that Srimati Radharani is most important because her real feature expresses the highest ecstasy of love. The ecstasy of love experienced by the other gopis cannot be compared to that of Srimati Radharani, Majjilila 8.161. All right. So why Radharani is most dear to Krishna? That her love is the highest. Yeah? Vraja gopis can attain the advanced states of Mahabhava known as Rudha, advanced, and Adhirudha, highly advanced. In Modana Adhirudha Bhava, the love of Srimati, Radhika touches Heights of ecstasy unknown to all the other gopis, Jaiva Dharma. Hmm. All right, now we're going to speak about residing at bath and right residing at Radhakund and bathing at Radhakund. Oh, Marat, uh -huh. you have a you have a couple of questions on this section you've just gone through. Would you take them now, or okay. do you want to wait till next? Okay, time? let's take them now before we go on. Okay, so then can we go firstly to Sachinandan Vishwamba Prabhu because he had his hand raised for quite a while. 
Hare Krishna. Uh, is my, am I audible? Yes. You're audible now, uh, yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, first question was that uh, Krishna is uh, some more the way. He's, uh, he's the highest, and no one can be higher than him. So, how is it that he's not able to reciprocate the gopis accordingly? I was, I was just wondering, how is it that he's not able to reciprocate with the gopis? As he says that uh, he cannot repay the debt of the gopis and he asks them to be satisfied with their own service. So how is Krishna not able to do that? I wanted to understand. Well, you said Krishna is Asamurva, but Krishna himself is conquered by pure loving devotion. Loving devotion is greater than Krishna, right? And the gopis and Srimati Radharani, they personify pure loving devotion. That's why Krishna cannot repay them. Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask um, that. I, I've lost it now. Sorry, you're switching them then, but go on, go on. You were going to ask something else. I, I kind of lost what I was going to say. <laughs> I was just like contending with that thing. Uh, so, it, is it uh, that love and devotion is even greater to Krishna? Yes. Krishna himself says in Bhagavad Gita. Bhakta mama bijananti yamam yes jasminta. Krishna is Madan Mohan, Srimati Radharani is Madan Mohan Mohini. She conquers Krishna by her loving devotion. Would, would it be fair to say, Maharaj, then what Krishna is saying there is that actually there is nothing greater than this pure loving devotion that you've given me. So I can't give you anything more than that already. Right, yeah. <laughs> Can we go to another another one? We've got Indraloka Kripa Mataji as well who wants to ask something. Mahamandas, you said that uh, there are all the five rasas present in Madhuri Ras. Can you explain how the Shanta Rasa in well, we showed that in the chart, right? The nature of Shantarasa is detachment from the material and attachment to Krishna. Okay. So that is the mood of that Shantar. But I explained that at Shantarasa there's no active service. One simply appreciates the opulence of Krishna. One is attracted by Krishna, but one is not active. One hasn't taken up any activity to serve Krishna. Okay. So gopis, like they were sitting, like uh, how it, uh, like the gopis are showing this uh, in Madhurya Rasa. You said it is included as Shanta Rasa. So they were not doing service, or uh... no? The point is made that the the qualities of each of the rasa is there. So the quality of Shantarasa is detachment from the material and attachment to Krishna. Okay. Okay. So the gopis certainly have that. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then Maharaj, there is um, Chaitanya Chandra Muli Govindan Prabhu and then Satyanandan Prabhu has another question. So let's go to Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu first. Maharaj, as Radharani and Gopis, they have the highest love for Krishna. So, but due to our mundane thoughts, this material point of view, sometimes we see as a material point of view the relation between Gopis and Radharani and Krishna. So how to get rid of this type of thoughts? We have to purify ourselves by proper hearing and chanting understanding the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna and understanding also the position of Srimati Radharani, that it's, not, it's nothing mundane. So by reading, you can read Prabhupada's Krishna book, 
Read it again and again. Prabhupada explains it so nicely. Although it's such a confidential pastime, but Prabhupada explains it so nicely that everyone can understand. Even though we are neophyte, even though we have so many material conceptions, that if we hear of this pastime from the pen of the pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, then he can help us, he can guide us to understand the nature of this pastime. You know, usually this pastime is in the tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam. So the idea is you've gone through first nine cantos, and if you've gone through first nine cantos, then you, you come to understand the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna, and then you become qualified to go into the tenth canto. But even if, if you haven't read the first nine cantos, if you read Prabhupada's Krishna book, Prabhupada has explained the pastimes of Lord Krishna in such a manner that even neophytes can understand the transcendental nature of Krishna's pastimes. Prabhupada wanted to give the pastimes of Krishna. He didn't know how long he would live. He didn't know if he would be able to translate the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. So he wrote the Krishna book very early in the year, in the beginning of our movement. And he wrote it in such a manner that neophytes, people knowing nothing, could understand the, the divine nature of these pastimes. So you read these, you read Prabhupada's book and certainly you can understand that this is not of this material world. And we should not carry our material conceptions to understanding, to thinking of this pastime. Hare Krishna, are you there? Yes, ma huh? yes Maharaj. Uh -huh. Maharaj. Another thing, one thing Maharaj. Yes. Correct. Like sometimes superficially we just try to convince ourselves, you know, it may superficially convince ourselves. Because we're hearing from Acharyas, Siddhar Vaishnavas. So is it correct to for the time being to convince our ourselves superficially? Yes, all right. For the time being, as you go on, gradually it will become reality. It will not be superficial. It will be factual. Thank you much. You simply have to go on with the process of devotional service, regularly hearing and chanting. And we will purify ourselves and we will be given the proper understanding. And Krishna says, Tesham satata yogtanam bhajatam pritik purvakam dadati buddhi yogam tam yena mamupaya. To those who are constantly devoted to me and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So we have to sincerely worship Krishna and Krishna will help us to understand. That's one of the verses you have to learn too. Can we go to Murli Govinda Prabhu? Murli Govinda Prabhu? Ah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Dhanabha Pranam Maharaj. Ah, Dhanabha Pranams. See, as long as we are in this material world, which is uh, a prison house and temporary, in spite of uh, getting into this uh, Sattva Guna also, Sometimes I feel still that material things is there. And whether we are progressing or not in the spiritual path and devotion, is there any self-assessment device 
through which we will be able to know at any given point of time that we are Paul Christian Maras? Yes. The self-assessment device is how much you're losing your interest in the mundane and in the material aspects of the world. We should be becoming more attracted, more and more absorbed in thinking of Krishna and the desire to chant and to be with the devotees. And we should have less and less interest in politics, cricket, uh, the news and the bank balance and all of these things. We become more and more concerned just simply thinking about devotional service. That's uh, how we can assess our progress. Thank you, Manas. And uh, in continuation to this, uh, <clears throat> even this uh, uh, compassion for the others in and around you, suppose, uh, even though we know a little bit of uh, Krishna consciousness, we will try to tell them and what are the advantages because having seen practically over the years, we always feel that, yes, if we can share this with them, with them, they will be benefited and they will attain uh, the love of God and, and they will come to know what is the real process and uh, advantages of Krishna consciousness. Whether we should be that kind of uh, compassion should be there within us? Yes, certainly. That's very good. Devotees, we should develop that kind of compassion that we want to give Krishna consciousness, we want to share it with others. But you have to consider who are the right persons. Now sometimes we have relationships with people, you know, and they just see, they, they know you, maybe they've known you for a long time before you ever took up an interest in Krishna consciousness and they can't understand how you've changed and they have difficulty and they don't want to accept that you've changed even. And so sometimes it's difficult to try to actually be Krishna conscious around people who we've known for a long time. They don't like to see that we're doing things which are different from them. Often they don't want Krishna consciousness and you're trying to introduce them to it, so they will oppose. So you, you have to be a little careful about it. You have to think who are the right people, who are the ones who, you know, can be receptive to this. You may be fortunate, I don't know. Some families, we do see some whole families come, become Krishna conscious. But you have, to, you have to judge how much they're willing to take it up, how, mu how much interest have, do they have. Do you understand? Yeah, thank you, Mara. Thank you so much. Yeah, just I wanted to share with you one small thing, uh, incident which took place. Uh, about two years back, I have gifted one uh, Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as it is to one of my uh, classmates about 50 years back when I was studying 6th standard. He was my classmate and there was a reunion. So I thought uh, on his birthday that uh, Bhagavad Gita gifting is the ideal thing. Karke. So after two years, he called me and he said he read some parts of Bhagavad Gita, some chapters. And he was a little bit inclined to know more about Bhagavad Gita. And he joined uh, this Bhagavad Gita uh, 18 days course. And he, he attended that uh, course completely. And he also participated in the quiz and all. Then it seems he has got more inclination even for chanting the holy name of us. Holy name also. Now he has been chanting uh, since last three months, Maharaj. Oh, wonderful. Very good. So certainly it, it's very satisfying when you can bring someone to Krishna consciousness. 
It's very satisfying if you can give someone even a book. You get someone to take a book and they agree to read it. And if they read it and study it and they're interested in it, you feel very good. And if they can become a devotee and start to chant Hare Krishna, then it's even better. That's the best, right? To help to bring someone to Krishna consciousness. All right? So, yeah, thank we'll, you, Mother. Thank you so much. We'll go on now. So we're going to hear about Prabhupada, about his instructions, about Radhakund. Can someone read this for us? Can I read Maharaj? Yes. In 1976, Srila Prabhupada was questioned about Radha Kondra. Was it alright? He gave assent and guidelines how it must be done with utmost reverent respect. Devotees went and a number of them began to spot, splash and behave frivolously. Srila Prabhupada found out, became furious and banned Bedi in Radha Kund. However, Srila Prabhupada spoke from Sri Upadesha Amrita and the Acharya's commentary clearly enjoined us to take Bedi there. What is to be done? Srila Prabhupada gave permission according to time, place and circumstance and we drew it like Go on. Shri yes. The injunction, however, Radha Kun is set down in scripture in a permanent form, including Prabhupada's purport. We can stand Prabhupada's anger had to do with the neophyte attitude of enjoying spirit, offensive to Srimati Radharani and not to the spiritual principle of Vedic in Radha Kun. The conclusion is that we should adopt the serious, matured, reverential mode desired by the Acharyas and take back their for our eternal spiritual benefit. A ray of Vishnu prepared Rupa Vilasa Dasa. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's what happened. Prabhupada actually told devotees we shouldn't take bath there. At first he said we could, then he said don't. Because he heard how devotees were not behaving properly. So even today we have some very senior devotees, they, they won't bathe there. But there are other senior devotees, they do bathe there. So it's up to the individual to take instruction from his spiritual master and do what the spiritual master recommends. Some spiritual masters don't approve and some do approve. So it varies. We, we understand Srila Prabhupada's instruction in the nectar of devotion, it's recorded, it's very important, very powerful, great spiritual benefit. But we see also that Srila Prabhupada gave verbal instruction, don't, don't be there, because they were not behaving properly. So if we behave properly, very reverential mood, and be very serious and mature, then will be all right. But if you misbehave, then you're kicking Radharani in the face. It's a great offense. Prabhupada said that, you're kicking Radharani if you go there and play around. Well, of course, devotees are much older now and more mature. We're, in 1976, devotees were very young. All right? This is a quote from Srila Prabhupada when he was speaking at Krishna Balaram temple. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never talked of the gopis publicly. The real Vrindavan is not to eat prasadam and sleep, but to follow the advice of Vrindavan Chandra and broadcast his message. That is his message. That is Vrindavan. Vrindavan Dham is worshipable. Don't commit an offense here. Take it as Chintamani Dham, Krishna. 
Narakam Das Thakur says to see Krishna is not possible with Vishaya. Vishaya meaning material desire. So we should take the shelter of Gornitai, become cleansed of eating, sleeping and mating. Then you will see Vrindavan. Don't commit offences here. There is a special influence in Vrindavan. So Prabhupada at the beginning, the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple, he spoke like this, warning devotees to be very careful. As I said before, any offences committed in Vrindavan, you get a, a 1,000 times the reaction of offences committed other places. So you have to be very careful. But any good service done there, you can get a 1,000 times the benefit. So we have to understand how to properly act, how to properly engage in devotional service in the Holy Dham. Very important. Before Bhava, surrender is disturbed by anarthas and aparad. Attainment of Bhava is a big step in diksha or advancement. Diksha is complete when one comes to Bhava. At this point, Krishna accepts the devotee on the same level as himself. The devotee becomes eligible to serve Krishna with his transcendental senses. Then the devotee enters bhava. When the devotee enters bhava, he can meditate on the pastimes of Radhakund and can stay there. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, no one should take Babaji unless he's reached the stage of bhava. Because only then can one always chant and remember the pastime of Radhakund. So Prabhupada did initiate one person one time as a Babaji and he said that was it, he'd never do it again. <laughs> he initiated one Westerner as a Babaji. The devotee lasted a month and, and then gave up. So Bab Babaji's it's a very advanced stage of devotion. Out of the many objects of favoured delight and of all the lovable damsels of Brajabhumi, Srimati Radharani is certainly the most, trans most treasured object of Krishna's love. And in every respect, her divine kund is described by great sages as similar dear to him. Undoubtedly, Radhakund is very rarely attained, even by the great devotees. Therefore, it is even more difficult for ordinary devotees to attain. If one simply bathes once within these holy waters, one's pure love of Krishna is fully aroused. Text number 11. Right? We have to understand how it's such a special place going to be described here. Uh, great, even great sages like Narada Muni, Sanat Kumar, they don't go there. So what to speak of ordinary devotees like herself? That we have to understand how very special it is and how very fortunate we are and we should show the greatest respect and reverence. So it did say we could get love of Krishna by bathing even once. So in this regard, we quote this from Nectar of Devotion. In these statements about devotional service, sometimes it may appear that the results have been overestimated. But actually, there is no overestimation. Some devotees, as revealed scriptures give evidence, have had immediate results by such association, although this is not possible for all. For example, the Kumaras immediately became devotees simply by smelling the incense in the temple. So these statements are not overestimations, nor are they stories. They are actual facts but are true for certain devotees and do not necessarily apply to all. These descriptions, even if considered overestimations, must be taken as they are in order to divert our attention from the fleeting material beauty 
to the eternal beauty of Krishna consciousness. And for a person who is already in contact with Krishna consciousness, the desired results are not unusual. So like that, we can understand that the importance of devotional service. If one simply bathes once within the holy waters, one love of how does one take that kind of bath described here? The answer is given. Follow all of the nectar of instructions instructions in the previous texts. Right? If we go through all the previous stages, then pure love will manifest. Right from the beginning, go through all of the stages, all of the, follow all of the instructions, then you can get the result. We have to be careful. What is described in text 10 is Bhava Bhakti, preliminary stage of love of God. Swarup Siddhi, one lives in the body, but within the body one has realization of Krishna, of our eternal spiritual form and of our service to him. But one is not qualified to enter Krishna's pastimes. At Vastu Siddhi, one enters Krishna's pastimes. At, at the same time, one should be following the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Kiriraj Maharaj is describing very advanced levels of devotional state. Swarupa Siddhi, you're still in the body, but we've realized our spiritual identity. And Vastu Siddhi, you can actually take part in Krishna's pastimes. So this is a very high level of devotion. When devotional service is situated on the transcendental platform of pure goodness, it is like a ray of the sunlight of love for Krishna. At such a time, devotional service causes the heart to be softened by various tastes, and it is called bhava, emotion or ecstasy. So, this is uh, Rupa Goswami's definition of Bhava, that is, it's a ray of the sunlight of Krishna Prem. Prem, Krishna Prem is after Bhava, right? The, Bhava is like the ray of the sunlight and it causes the heart to soften. Would someone like to read this? Can we have a reader? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, please read. Shall I read? Continue. Yes, Maharaj. Go ahead. This body you can utilize for sense gratification. Just generally, if people are doing eating, sleeping, mating, and drinking, and so on. So you can utilize this body. It is material. But if you engage this body for the service of the Lord, it becomes spiritualized. As I have already explained, the iron rod constantly in touch with fire, it becomes, at end, it becomes red hot. That is fire. At that time, it acts like fire. You touch that red hot iron rod anywhere, it will burn. Similarly, this body can be spiritualized although it is material body. Bhagavad Gita 2.18, Hyderabad, November 23, 1972. So thank you, Maharaji. Prabhupada is explaining how the body can become spiritualized simply by engaging it in the service of Krishna. Go ahead, Maharaji. Can you read more? We may be chanting in Namabhas, but we benefit tremendously. We become liberated from material contaminations and sinful reactions. But when we chant in Shuddha Nam, we realize our relationship with Krishna. When we are in Bhava Bhakti, we are qualified for this kind of birth. Although 
respectful bathing before bhava bhakti will also be greatly beneficial hmm. by giriraj swami yes thank you so maharaj is comparing stages in chanting namabas it's not pure chanting but there's some benefit there you're freed from material contamination and sinful reactions and when we chant sudanam then you get the greatest benefit you realize your relationship with krishna so Mahar maharaj then explains that we may not have bhava bhakti we should actually have bhava bhakti to take bath in radhakund we may not have bhava bhakti but if we bathe with proper respect it will be also helpful it can be beneficial to us yeah maraji can you read sure maraj by devotional service only one is elevated to the transcendental planet goloka vrindavan and there also there is only devotional service for the activities of devotional service both in this world and in the spiritual world are one and the same devotional service does not change the example of a mango can be given here if one gets an unripe mango it is still a mango and when it is ripe it remains the same mango but it has become more tasteful and relishable similarly there is devotional service performed according to the direction of the spiritual master and the injunctions and regulatory principles of shastra and there is devotional service in the spiritual world rendered directly in the association with the spirit supreme personality of godhead but they are both the same there is no change the difference is that one stage is unripe and the other is ripe and more relishable shrimad bhagavatam 4.9.11 p yes purport right purport yeah thank you and so here's a diagram of what was just described by shrila prabhupad you can see the mango different stages of the mango on the bottom green mango and gradually becoming a little ripe at the top it's supposed to be fully ripened right and on the left side we saw on the bottom surrender and association of devotees in the beginning we come to krishna consciousness we come and we take the association of devotees and from then then we come up with sadhana bhakti and we learn how to practice devotional service and that sadhana bhakti goes on and you know it's it, it, gradually we may come up may be fortunate and come to bhava bhakti with ecstatic love and that bhava bhakti goes on and can become prema bhakti pure love all right and shown here on the right side you can see also how is presented the different stages of devotional service from shraddha up to prema bhakti so prabhupada is explaining the activities we do here in this world are devotional service and if we go back to godhead we continue the same way prabhupada would give the example about the machine which is used to thresh the rice that it can only do one thing it doesn't matter if you have that machine in india or if you take it to america or wherever you take it is going to do the same thing so he said devotees like that wherever you put the devotee they're going to serve krishna it's, there's no difference right there's that verse in shrimad bhagavatam uh swarga apavarga narakesh vapitu yata darshana swarg heaven apavarga liberation narakesh hell vapitu yata darshana a devotee sees these places all the same wherever he is he's simply going to serve krishna he's going to chant the holy name he's going to preach krishna consciousness just like the mango 
It's just different tastes. Hmm? Okay, so as shown here. Shravana Kirtana. Oh. The arrow shows increasing increasing hearing and chanting. All right. So we finished. That's the end of the PowerPoint. Just to go over the objectives. We explained the hierarchy of spiritual places. We explained the gopis, why they're the most exalted, why Radharani is very dear. And we explained also Prabhupada's mood about bathing and residing in Radha Kund. All right. So, any questions from the devotees? Yeah, you have Sachinanda and Vishwambar Prabhu. Yeah, uh, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, I was just trying to understand about the importance of Radha Kunda. Uh, she, you explained about the importance of Radha Rani, how she is the highest devotee. And simultaneously, uh, it is written in Nectar of Instruction. And, uh, but uh, it is uh, similar to, uh, as Radha Rani, the same way uh, Radha Kunda is the And also, the waters of Radha uh, Kund are uh, said to be the personified Radha Rani in liquid form. So, we're just trying, trying to understand how is it that it is similar. Okay, the pastimes have been performed uh, with Radha Rani, or uh, Krishna has performed his pastimes, but how is it that it is very much on the same platform as Shri Radha Rani? Just trying to understand that. Well, it's just like, how is the holy name of Krishna none different from Krishna? The holy name, the holy name of Krishna possesses uh, guna, rup, lila, you know, the qualities of Krishna, the form of Krishna, the pastimes of Krishna, it's all there within the holy name. Everything is within the holy name of Krishna. How is that possible? It's Krishna's inconceivable spiritual potency. In a similar manner, Radha Kund is none different from Srimati Radharani. That it's her, her most treasured, her most sacred of all places. Prabhupada used to talk, he said, and sometimes a person may say, if you love me, love my dog. <laughs> you know, I think maybe Prabhupada picked this up from America and in, in the USA. People may sometimes talk like that. If you love me, love my dog. <laughs> so, the same way, you know, Srimati Radharani and Radha Kund, they're non different. This Radha Kund is the manifestation, it's a representation of Srimati Radharani. It's her most treasured of all places. The, this is it because of the pastimes which uh, Radharani had with Lord Krishna and Radha Kund? Is it because of that? Yes, because, because it's the most, it's a place of their greatest intimacy, right? So it, it's certainly the most dear to her. And Rupa Goswami, why did Rupa Goswami give so much importance to Radha Kund? Do you remember? How was it explained? How did Prabhupada explain why Rupa Goswami was giving so much importance to Radha Kund? Because uh, it was Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire to find it. Yes, right. Because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave so much importance to Radha Kund. And who is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Sorry? And who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It's Krishna himself. Yes, and he's come in the mood of Srimati Radharani, right? Yes, yes. So, yes, and he's showing us, the, you know, he's so much eager to find Radha Kund. 
And when he discovers it, he takes his bath there, in the middle of the rice fields. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing all of us, he was showing the Goswamis particularly, who were living there at the time, he, he revealed to them Radha Kund, and by the grace of the Goswamis, the Goswamis have revealed it to all of the devotees. So very, very special, sacred place. Okay, Maharaj. Okay. And uh, Maharaj, another question uh, regarding uh, the past time when Lord Krishna uh, uh, vanished from the sight of all the other gopis to be with Radharani. But uh, when we go further to the past time, even Lord Krishna vanished from the sight of Radharani. So, yes. Uh, right. I, I mentioned that, that sometimes Radharani will disappear and sometimes Krishna will disappear from all the gopis, not just from Radharani, but from all the gopis. So that was done in order to increase the love of, I mean, maybe Vipralambhava or there was something? Like yes, that. that's right, to increase the, because the separation increases the desire to be with Krishna. Because when Krishna... No, when Sorry, Krishna is with them. Uh, also that uh, Sh uh, Sri Radharani uh, felt a little bit of pride that I am the best of the gopis. Maybe that's why Krishna is with Then Krishna didn't like that pride and he vanished. Is it correct? Uh, I heard he, it somewhere. Yes, it's mentioned there. If you read Prabhupada's commentary on it, Prabhupada's Krishna book is described that you yeah, know yeah. Krishna had, was with all the gopis and then he went off with Radharani. But then he, saw, he, he saw, understood Srimati Radharani was also proud, and so he left her. So how is it that Radharani, being the highest of the devotee, can have pride? And it cannot be material for sure. It can well, be, can be this, you have to understand this is all Leela. This is all due to Leela Shakti, the power of pastimes, the potency of pastimes. It's to give pleasure for the Lord. The Lord takes pleasure in these dealings. That when, when she becomes... She, the gopis and Srimati Radharani, they don't do anything except for the pleasure of Krishna. So sometimes Krishna takes pleasure in seeing the devotee become a little proud and then he can humble them. It give, it's all for the pastime of the Lord, for, for the pleasure, His, his pleasure. And because the Lord is getting pleasure, we also get pleasure. We get pleasure hearing about these things. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can we go to Muradi Govinda Prabhu then, please? He has also had his hand raised. You're muted, Prabhu. Muradi Govinda. Sorry. That's okay. That's living. Uh, but it is explained that by serving Radha Kunda, one gets an opportunity <coughs> to become an assistant of uh, Srimati Radha Rani under the eternal guidance of gopis. How can we understand uh, Maharaj? Because even as devotees, we always pray for the mercy of Radha Rani. As she recommends any devotee to Krishna, he is a sincere devotee, you have to accept him as a devotee. You have to give him that inclination towards devotion, love, everything. So we always pray for the mercy of Radharani. In this situation, whether this mental uh, <coughs> prayers, mental prayers that we are we are in Radha, we are at Radha Kund, that is sufficient. Physically, we may not be going there. So in that situation, that mental meditation is sufficient, Maras. Yes, definitely. Mental meditation, certainly. If you can go there in the... Somebody may go there and they may not mentally be there. <laughs> no? Someone may go to Radhakun, but their, their mind is not there. In their mind they're thinking, oh, why am I here? I should be some other place. <laughs> so the mind is certainly very important. So if mentally you can go to Radhakun, that's very good. Very, and that's certainly non-different from being there. 
Is that what you you're talking about? Yeah. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We know the pastime that the devotee meditating on Krishna in the mind. Devotional service can be done in the mind. So certainly, if you bathe there in Radhakund mentally. Someone was telling me yesterday how their spiritual master, he never bathes there at Radhakund. So because he never takes bath at Radhakund, so the disciples also, they don't, you know, they're very reluctant to bathe there also. So I said, anyway, you can do Parikrama, you can do Parikrama around the Radhakund, and you can do Dandabad Parikrama if you like around Radhakund, and you can clean Radhakund. You can do some seva there in Radhakund, like distributing prasadam to the Damvasis. There are so many ways you can serve Radhakund. It's not that you have to just bathe there. And you can go and do nice service. You can chant the holy name in, in Radhakund, just sitting there and being there. It's not that you have to go and take bath there. But Even you, meditating on the pastimes performed by Lord Krishna and Radharani and gopis, uh, that is also sufficient, Maras. Continuous meditation on the pastimes. Well, of course, that you're you're talking about the very high levels of uh, meditation concentration. If it comes naturally into the mind that you're able to absorb the mind like that on the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, yeah, we do want to do that, but it shouldn't disturb our service. We want to continue with our devotional service. We don't want to say, no, don't disturb me, I'm meditating on Radha and Krishna's pastimes, I can't do any service. <laughs> You're right? We don't want to neglect duties which we have, physical duties which have to be performed for the service of the Lord. But at the same time, if internally you're able to remember the pastimes of the Lord, very nice, certainly we, we're encouraged like that. But we don't, uh, uh, we, we shouldn't think about seeing Krishna, but rather we want to cultivate the mood of separation from Krishna. We're not yet really, I mean, I don't think we want to encourage you to go into the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. You can remember the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, but we shouldn't think we can take, enter immediately into these pastimes. Like some of the Goswamis were doing, they could actually enter into the pastimes because they were Manjaris, they were having their spirit spiritual form, they knew their spiritual identity, so they could enter into the pastimes of Krishna. So as Giri Raj Maharaj explained, we read just now a few minutes ago, from Bhava you can go on into these higher stages, you know, and Vastu Siddhi, you, but first you should know Swarupa Siddhi, you should, or Siddha Deha, you should know your perfected form in the spiritual world. And then you can think about entering into these pastimes. Prabhupada's mood is more, he encourages us, he, don't talk about seeing Krishna, talk about trying to see Krishna. Where is Krishna? When will I see Krishna? This is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the gopis and the, the mood of the Goswamis. They're feeling separation from Krishna. Where is Krishna? When will he come? And so Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati always used to say that don't try to see Krishna but act in such a way that Krishna will come to see you. So when we act properly, when we're properly engaged in devotional service of the Lord, then we can attract the attention of the Lord. So sitting down, meditating on the pastimes of Krishna, yes, it's good to hear the pastimes of Krishna, very nice. We like to remember Krishna. But, you know, 
we don't want to disturb our devotional service. Practical service has to go on. We have to consider also the level, as we quoted, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never talked about the pastimes of the gopis in public. It's a very confidential thing. So you have a strong attraction to the pastimes of Krishna, that's nice. But, you know, mainly for our preaching, we're talking about you're not the body, people have not got over that yet, difficult for them to understand they're not the body, try to get people free of sen the desire for sense gratification. If people are not following regulated principles, if they're not yet vegetarian and anything, De definitely we don't want to be speaking about Krishna Leela or the gopis, the pastimes with the gopis. These are very high subject matters, generally not discussed in public. So when this book first came out, devotees were a little worried and they thought, well, oh, this is not for public distribution. But Prabhupada said, no. He said, yeah, it is. It's for everyone. He said, let everyone read it. He wanted everyone to know the nature of devotional service, that these places are there and that these levels of Krishna consciousness are there. But to actually enter into that level, as we said, you have to follow all the instructions from the beginning. We have to be a very truthful and honest devotee and understand our spiritual position. How much are we actually freed from material desires? And how much have we really developed the attraction for the service of Lord Krishna? All right? Thank you, Maharaj. Um, there's two more, two more questions. Yeah. We have a child. Excuse me. Acharya Nandapurva and then Hareshri Madhuri Mataji. Okay. Thank you, Krishna Maharaj. Before Maharaj mentioned that when we came to, when we come to Radhakun, we don't need to take bath and just doing, yeah, just sit down there and chanting and doing sewa and some sewa service to Radhakun, it's also beneficial. But then, uh, before it is mentioned that uh, in order to take part in Radhakun, we must be in the Bawa stage. But it is also beneficial for us to take part with the proper respect. My question is, what is what, what is uh, actually the meaning of taking part in Radhakun with proper respect? Well, proper respect means that you understand the nature of this place, that it's a very pure holy place and that you're very, very privileged to go to be there and to enter into that water, to take the bath there and you pray to Krishna that though I'm unqualified, that please allow me, somehow by some good fortune I've been given this chance and you should also get the permission from your spiritual authority your spiritual master, ideally, you should request, you know, can you give me your permission? And like that, you have the blessing of the spiritual authority, spiritual, of your spiritual guide, and then you can, can take bath in a, in a very pure mood, thinking that this is the most holy of all places, and even Narada Muni and Sanaka, the Komaras, they're not coming here to take bath. I'm somehow, I'm so fortunate. Let me not do anything to disrespect this place. Let me simply take bath here and pray for that I can get some benefit, spiritual benefit, that I come here to take bath in order to help me develop my Krishna consciousness, to develop my love for Krishna. Right? So it means that it is okay for us to take bath 
but by uh, this proper of respect, this kind of respect. But uh, before when I was there in Radakun with uh, some senior devotee, they told me that it's better to not take bath there, but uh, only sprinkle water, uh, take some of the Radakun water and sprinkle on our heads. That is also beneficial. Yes, definitely. That is beneficial. I'm saying it's not the same for everyone. There are some people who want to take bath there and they get the permission from their spiritual master so they can do it. There are some senior devotees in our movement who take bath there. Not everyone. But I told also, Srila Prabhupada said, no. And so the devotees who were with you, they were cautious and they guided you and they suggested to you that it's not very proper. So nothing wrong in that. Very good. Yes, uh, when I take people, I often bring devotees from China there and I will tell them, just take water on your head. Because I know it's not for every devotee. You, usually I myself don't take bath there, I just take some water on my... After Prabhupada said that, you know, I'd taken bath before, but after Prabhupada said that, then I didn't take bath again. Alright, any other question? Yes, Maharaj, you've got two more. Um, Hareshwari Madhavi Mataji first, and then Anandalina Mataji. Mm -hmm. So, Hareshwari Madhavi Madhav Mataji, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I'm uh, for Radha Kunda. And if we pay obeisances and take Archman, so will it be considered as the same as taking Bhagavad Gita? Everything depends on the attitude. If you have the proper attitude, you get the full benefit. Okay, and then we can go to Ananda Leader Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, mentioning that we have to be free from the material desire and um, we should have the attachment to Krishna's service. So this attachment to Krishna's service is like the service which we would like to do or we are inclined, we are best at it, like you know, some devotees are good at group distribution and some are good with cooking and, and things like that. Almost in our way of serving to Krishna, we should be attached to that and not be specifically attached to some specific um, way of serving Him. Well, we should be attached to following the order of the spiritual master. Whatever particular instruction you get from your guru, you should try to follow that. Okay. You're doing service. You should do service under instruction. You take instruction from your spiritual authority. They will tell you how to serve. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So, um, Maharaj, there's one other question on the chat box from Harsha Danwani Mataji. It goes back to the Rasas. And um, Mataji is asking that Madhavendra Puri was a proponent of Madhurya Rasa. I've heard he became a Kalpa Vriksha. Is this correct? And if yes, can you please explain why he became a tree and not a gopi or a manjari? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you could say that he became a very special tree, right? A Kalpa Vriksha tree. That means he could see all the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. He could witness all of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. All the very, even intimate pastimes where nobody else is present. But as a tree, they could be present. 
So, you know, trees also can have the greatest intimacy with Radha and Krishna. You should understand that in the spiritual world, uh, the, the devotees are all fully perfect souls and they have all kinds of mystic powers. So they can change forms. And they have that ability. If you read Brihad Bhagavatamrita, it's very detailed descri descriptions how in Vaikuntha the devotees can change into different forms simply for the pleasure of Krishna. So if Madhavendra Puri takes the form of a tree, he's doing it for the pleasure of Krishna. Because he's a very, very intimate, not, you know, he's, and he is, certainly is in Madhurya Ras, we know at the time of him, him leaving the body, he's chanting that prayer, Aedina Dayadra Nata He Matura Nata Nalakalo, like that he's chanting the, the words of Srimati Radharani. That, that verse which can only be understood by Srimati Radharani and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and also, uh, um, also um, Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radharani. Only three people understand that verse. And so, <laughs> difficult to understand, why is he a tree? Krishna is serving Krishna. Krishna may want him to be a tree. We do whatever Krishna wants. You want him to be a gopi, is it? <laughs> okay. I think. All right. All right. I have heard that we all are actually in Guru Pindavan sleeping and while we are in this material world, only that we are dreaming in the in Guru Pindavan. Is it true, my love? Can you say that again? Uh, I have heard that actually we all are in Guru Pindavan and we are, we are dreaming over there uh, and while we are in this material world, it's actually a dream of Guru Pindavan. In the dream, we chose to enjoy independently from Krishna. Is it true, Mara? Yes. Well, I don't know if we're all from Galo Vrindavan. We may be, I mean, we could be from Vaikuntha also. You know, they're also pure devotees. It's also the spiritual world. Not that everybody has to be in Goloka, but that's the desire, definitely the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But you're right, this material world, this is our daydream. Actually, we're all dreaming. We're separate from Krishna, but eternally we're with Krishna somewhere, wherever it is. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. I think we can finish here today. So, okay, Maharaj. Thank all the devotees for their participation. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak on nectar of instruction. Thank you. So, at this stage, um, I would like you all to please turn on your mics. You know what's coming, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if you have a camera, please put your camera on as well, please. Okay. Everybody unmute. Go. <laughs> I see some, someone there and showing some appreciation. So, um, if we can please unmute, everybody. Unmute mics, not mute. Keep them. Open your mics. Open your mics. Everybody open your mics. Okay, that's better. Okay.